Hi, virtual friends. My name is Jazz Kwong. I'm Asa Hao, and today we're actually going to be talking about Ponyo culture in the Philippines. And for our guests today, I brought my two friends, Sofia Pueyo and Gabby Gomez. And I actually met them a few years ago, I think before I started studying um, in senior high. So yeah, I hope we have fun today and I hope we learn a lot of things about Konyo culture. Hello, my name is Gabby Gomez and I study uh, multimedia arts in Benioc. Hi, my name is Sofia Pueyo and I made, I'm majoring in management in um, the University of San Francisco. Yeah. Girl, why do you sound so unsure about your name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm so used to saying Ateneo, but now it's a new school. That's why. I'm studying management. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so we're just going to jump into the questions. Let's start with your household. Like, what type of environment did you guys grow up in? Like, what well, what language what language were you speaking? I grew up in a safe environment. Oh, <laughs> um, and my first language, was, I guess, like American English, yeah. <laughs> and then Filipino came next. I'm so sorry. No, it, it's okay. Okay. Um, I also grew up in a safe environment. <laughs> I guess we all did. <laughs> Growing up, I think the primary language my parents taught me was American English, also derogatory. But um, they also tried to they also tried to teach me Filipino. It's just that I think they prioritize um, English over Filipino. Yes. Actually, yeah, same. If we're talking about household environment. I pretty much grew up the same way, it's a safe environment. Like, oh, so I also actually grew up speaking English, but I don't know why. Like, if people ask me, I just say, oh, it's because my dad's Chinese, but he actually can speak really good Filipino guys, so I don't know why I grew up speaking English. Maybe it's because my mom just hates how, the way he sounds when he speaks Filipino. He does. <laughs> <laughs> do he, he do be sounding kind of mm, it sounds way too forced anyways what about um, you Jazz? I, I guess I grew up in a safe environment too um, <laughs> yeah I, I, we all did so first language was Filipino we studied in a Chinese school but had to stop because we weren't using it so they thought it was useless but then I moved to an international school, had to speak in full-blown English, then just adapted the language. So yeah, Filipino was my first language, but I hear tons of languages, Chinese, English, Filipino. Where did you guys graduate? I graduated from Zobel. So if, you know, <laughs> it makes sense that I'm Konyo. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, what about you? Uh, I came from AC, <laughs> Yo, um, Assumption <laughs> College in San Lorenzo. So yeah, I guess it also makes sense. So I'm calling you. Dude, AC <laughs> is like, AC is the poster school for Konyo girls. It's like, yeah. we even had, dude, we even had this stall that was like, two socks, two socks, the fish ball. No. <laughs> we don't even have fish balls. Dude, shut up, we did, right? Like, I remember no, I that was Takoyaki. No, girl. dude, I joined AC in 2011, so I'm not really like an old girl in the sense that I was there my whole life. Um, but when I entered in grade 11, like the what do we call it, the common, the cafeteria, there was like this Yo, tall yeah. dude in the com- in the corner. Uh, I think it was just there for one year or something. It was called oh, Tuzos Tuzos. They, they used to remember? Say <laughs> it was like even fish ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I don't know how like the tooth of tooth of the fish ball thing showed up because I don't even think AC girls eat street food. Do you? Do, do we? <laughs> do we eat street food? I do. Okay, now I'm just gonna leave because I don't. <laughs> but aren't you allergic? So like, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is fish 
all made out of real fish, so... Wait, no, I mean, obviously it is, but I don't think I'm allergic to that. It's just, I grew up with the stigma that, you know, it's, it's dirty, so no one really allowed me to eat fish balls. So I don't... <laughs> I can't go, oh, I'm gonna do stuff, do stuff with fish ball. Oh, have you ever thought about whether you're ponyo or not? Or is it like your second nature to you that you're going to use where it's like... Oh, are you pagawaing your new glasses or something like that? <laughs> do you ever think about, like, do you use these words as purpose? <laughs> or do you, you know, it's just like second nature is to you and you don't give it much thought. <laughs> oh, okay, I can answer first. <laughs> so, um, if I don't think I've, okay, when I was younger, the thought of being Konyo never crossed my mind because I didn't even know what it was. Uh, I think I only learned what being Konyo was when I was almost in high school because I think my parents finally realized how bad I am at Filipino and they were they would make fun of me when mm-hmm. they'd ask me to speak in Filipino and I didn't know what to say. And then that's when they called me Konyo and they were like, oh my god, you have an accent on everything. And why did we raise you to be like this? I'm like, I don't know, that's you, that's on you. So anyway, ever since then, I, I've like understood and accepted that I'm Konyo. It's also the stigma that comes with graduating from freaking Zubel. So yeah, like right now I recognize that I'm Konyo and I kind of wish I wasn't Konyo. But it's too late for that now because I'm too ingrained into speaking English. Okay, Um, I don't think... I ever really like thought about being Konyo, but I guess like I've always known that I've been, you know, like I don't really speak Filipino fluently and I just add <laughs> words here and there. Oh, uh, but the moment, can I share like the moment I realized I was Konyo? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so right, I just transferred to USF for like, you know, my school in the States. Um, and you know chatting with people from there you have to speak straight English and like that's like one of the hardest things for me which sounds stupid yeah but you know when I have like I was on FaceTime with my friend and I started saying talaga and he was like what? <laughs> and I was like that's not okay and then I would start saying cuss words and I would iMessage him and then he start calling me out like are you okay? what's that? I'm like <laughs> I'm fine. I'm sorry. It's just like, you know, it's so in me that I like have to make a conscious effort to not say certain Filipino <laughs> words anymore. But yeah, I mean, that's how I found out I was really cool. So, there's that. Wait, okay. I know what you're talking about because I have like an Australian best friend and obviously you also have to speak straight um, straight English because she's not going to understand words like na or lang. And I was, at first, I was struggling so much because there are certain words or there are certain sentences that for me don't really make sense unless I add like a Filipino word in there. Yes, so the, the one time I did that, she was like, bro, what the hell does that even mean? <laughs> and I was like, um. <laughs> so I was just like, that was in 2017 or something. I don't think I've learned since then. But she has Filipino friends now, so she's just the one learning. So that's on her now. Can I add? Can I add something? Yeah. yeah. I feel like also sometimes you know when you add Filipino words to sound nicer or like maybe to be funnier. You can't do that <laughs> with the English language anymore because like you can't. There's no like for, you know, or yeah. like. Yeah, the yeah. English language doesn't have any honorifics, which is super exactly. weird. Like, you know how Americans just call their friends' parents by their first name? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. What about you, Jazz? Are you Ponyo or no? I don't think I am, but I've been called Konyo because I use words like Parang like and then oh, yeah, they just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they judge you. They start like calling you. Oh, oh, you're Konya pala. No, I'm not. I I just I just they start calling you maarte. And then when you have this like yeah. open forum, and then so I remember the first time you introduced yourself in class, and then I thought you were so maarte because you spoke this way that way. And I don't know if I should be like 
oh, should I be offended or do you still get offended when people call you Maarte the way you speak? I don't think I've ever been called Maarte because I speak English, but okay, because and it's in Zobel context, everyone there speaks English, so it's like yeah. normal for, for people to talk in English. But when I went to Benil, that was like my first time um, having like majority of the class prefer to speak in uh, Filipino over English and nobody thought I was Maarte but you know it's kind of sad when everyone's doing class introductions and they introduce themselves in Filipino and then you're there introducing yourself in yeah. English so I, people I found that. me yeah so people found me intimidating not Maarte but like intimidating I guess I don't really find it like offensive but It's, it's just like, you know, it's kind of like sad that people assume that you're a certain way uh, because of how you speak. Yeah. Wait, so does that like hinder you in any way in like making friends when you first move to the Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's mostly because like, what, like people wouldn't really try to talk to me, I think, because they were under the impression that I couldn't speak. Um, Filipino and that I only spoke English so that was like kind of off-putting for them I actually have like a funny story about that because I was with my blockmates one time and we were talking about like what schools we graduated from and what province our families were from and they were talking in Filipino I was just listening to the conversation I can understand Filipino by the way it's just that if, if you ask me to say something then like my brain flies out the window but they were talking about um where where they were from and stuff and then they turned to me and they were like Gabi Taga saan ka? and in my head I could not process if they were asking me where my province was or what school I graduated from so I was dead ass just staring at them and like I couldn't come up with an answer and then the person who asked me was like hello are you okay <laughs> That was like so embarrassing. <laughs> I get that. Um, I was also actually surprised that most of the new the students speak in Filipino. Cause like first day, I was also speaking in English. I was introducing myself in English, and no one was talking to me. Okay, for context, I didn't go to interactive, so I didn't know anyone. <laughs> oh, and they all knew each other. I was with Gabby during my scheduled interactive. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, I remember that. I yeah. picked you up. <laughs> like everyone knew each other and they were talking and I was just like, oh my god, I don't know anyone. And they wouldn't talk to me because actually I got some info from my friend and he was like, oh, you know, I just like, I didn't want to talk to you during first day because you look so scary. Like, And then you started speaking and I was like, this girl doesn't know Filipino. Like, she definitely won't get along with the class. And I was like, So y'all gonna talk to the Korean guy who also doesn't know how to speak Filipino, <laughs> but not to me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah. So what about you, Sophia? You you are from Ateneo, right? And there's like yeah. I think there's also a stigma that Ateneans are kind of conyo. Everyone's going like Ateneo. I honestly don't agree, just because I feel like my class is pretty diverse in that sense. <laughs> There were a lot of people. I mean, yeah, you know, you got your econs and Xavier, Xavier, uh, I'm not even gonna bother. And then, you know, <laughs> all people from Chinese schools. And I also had people from, you know, from Mindanao and Visayas, like, so like, it was like, you know, oh no, I'm turning. I keep saying like, <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think Ateneo is necessarily gone anymore, or at least the people I was surrounded, like, We were. I mean, I mean, I'm Kanye, and I guess they're also the people I mingled with are also Kanye. So like, I don't know anymore what to say. Wait, now I'm getting confused. Because I don't think Atenean. I feel like a, a lot of Ateneans are good in Filipino. Honestly, like, I mean, like I was one of the bad ones, but there are a lot of people who are good in Filipino. Like. And people be judging Athenians, but I don't think that's the case anymore. Baka before, but not anymore. <laughs> so, you were, so you weren't called Maarte when people found no, out you're I don't think, though? I don't think anyone called me Maarte, or maybe they just assumed I was Konyo. 
people thought I was like white, so I was like, okay, bro. <laughs> okay. Like, like, I don't know, because like I'm a happy, so I guess people just assumed that I would be funny. So no, I've never been called Martha. Baka behind my back. We should not call you Martha though. I feel like being I don't know, but I'm a hater. So I feel like being in an AP, you won't really get called Martha for being no. funny. We should not call you Martha for being funny. But almost <laughs> everyone. I'm not gonna generalize the AP population, okay? But I may offend, you know, some viewers. Joke. No, um. <laughs> Based from like my experience, because I was only there for like senior high rise, the new students that came in, dude, a majority of them, like 80% of them, was from my old junior high school. So I know they're not Konyo, but like a bunch of the new students speak so good Filipino. Like their Filipino is so good. Yeah. Like for ex- there are like a few AC girls, like original AC girls, who are good in Filipino, but a bunch of the ones who are good really did come from like. Different schools. If you get what I'm saying, it's like yeah. they were the new students during senior high. And obviously, I just had to go and take that stigma because I was super bad at Filipino. Dude. Do you get that thing in Filipino class where you have to search like an English word and then you you type in Tagalog or in Filipino? I yeah. do that a lot in my Filipino classes. Speaking of trans, using Google Translate, did you guys ever get like? special quizzes or exemptions in Filipino like you can write this essay in English just because I know you need to pass this class like I got that so much for AP in junior high like there were three of us like three of my friends one is, one is Thai so obviously she can't speak Filipino but the other one my friend Martha we were we were we're both Filipino <laughs> Um, but we always got exemptions. Our teacher was always like, you know what? Just answer in English, because I know if you don't answer in English, you're gonna fail this class. And I was like, oh no! Like, did you guys ever get that? Like those exemptions? Can I? <laughs> can I answer? Can I answer? <laughs> okay. Um. Well, AC does not. They don't offer that. You know, special <laughs> Filipino. So. I went to school in the states for grade school, and then I moved for grade four here. So I didn't know anything about Filipino, and I had to go to Filipino class, and I would <laughs> fail every single test, and I was just bawling tears. And there was this one moment that I will forever remember. We ha- there was like this special AP prayer in Filipino, and we had to have it, you know, say it orally in front of the class. Oh and bro, I was just. Just the water works. Miracles, miracles. Like I couldn't, but like you know, it's okay. I passed. I passed. I didn't fail. Almost borderline. But I <laughs> what did you expect from speaking English to Filipino? And like, boom, my ten-year-old self not having it. I was shaking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe now they do, but maybe now. Maybe now you should have now. Should've had it. It's too late for you now. It's too late. That's why I'm so poor and. <laughs> so <you know>. poor. <laughs> I mean, I'm. No. Um, no. In Zobel, they also have special Filipino, but like the only people who take special Filipino are foreigners. So if you're Filipino, you have to take a uh, regular Filipino. So no, I never got any exemptions for Filipino. I just had to suffer like, you know, <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> yeah. CSR, like my old school, my junior high, they didn't also, they didn't offer special Filipino courses for the foreigners. They just gave like plus points because, you know, you're foreign. Um, <laughs> so when I moved, I came from Mahati Ho Christian School and honestly, I don't know if we had like a proper Filipino class. Like, I just have zero memory of Filipino from Mahati Ho. So when I came from that environment and then I was thrown into CSR grade 4 where there was Filipino and then there was Filipino history, Hekashi in Filipino. And then we had to read out the map of the Philippines in Filipino. I got called out by my teacher and she was like, Nisha? Are you stupid? And I was like, <laughs> Oh, she did not have to do you like that. What the freak? Bro. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was 11 and I was like, um, I'm not, maybe I am stupid. I don't know. <laughs> 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 
joke. I didn't even know how to pray in Filipino. Like, I'm a Namdian. I couldn't. I couldn't say it at all. So like when I was prayer leader, I honestly I would just go absent if I knew I was prayer oh. leader for the day. <laughs> Can you, you do pray? it now? Oh. Kama namin go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> I still can't do Kama it. Ka. <laughs> I still can't do it. Oh my god! Years later. Love. <laughs> Which is why um, I didn't like being prayer leader in AC either. Yeah, I couldn't. I'd go to the banyo. Yeah. <laughs> Skip Filipino. I'd like leave and like chill there for five minutes. <laughs> before and before and until, after. Uh, at least until uh, mindfulness minute was over. Wait, you were in an international school, right, Jazz? So you didn't have yeah. Filipino. Yeah. Um, there's a special Filipino for them, but since I'm a Filipino, similar to Zubel, I I wasn't able. I can't take it. But I I I can speak in Tagalog. But I need those words to yeah. search and Google to like make that essay complete. I was gonna say, did y'all ever do that thing where like if you're taking a Filipino test and then there's an essay portion and you have to write in Filipino, obviously. But there's like a word you didn't know in Filipino, so you just put it in English, but you made it italicized. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I didn't even italicize it. I just left it. <laughs> when they find out that you can't really speak Filipino, that's when they start like calling your name. So they say, Oh, yeah. siguro, siguro mayaman ka kasi you know how to speak English. That, and right? Then, that's the yeah, way that's my thing. thing. Because you're calling you, you're mayaman. What? Or it's oh, like just because yeah. you know how to speak English, you're automatically like mayaman. Like that connection is for me. It's really weird because I mean, not everyone who's rich is like fluent in English. I mean, there are people naman hmm. who are better at Filipino talaga, right. and you know that 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 should actually be like the bar. You know that you're good at Filipino. And then not everyone who's good in English then man is like oh, rich, na rich. And it's just mm-hmm. that connection that being like speaking English or being fluent in English automatically drives you up like the economic ladder. For me it was just such a big I was like, is there something wrong with our with our society's thinking or like or is it just me? Oh, no, I agree. Good. Honestly, I don't think you necessarily have to speak English to like be wealthy or to be educated because I also feel like English equals educated too sometimes and I don't think that's like that's not true I mean I don't I don't agree with that you can be educated with whatever language you want to speak or dialect even so I don't think oh it's just sad that that still that's a thing and it shouldn't be a thing honestly actually there aren't a lot of questions because you know, we thought this would just be more like a chica thing. I guess it is. You know, we're making friends with yeah. someone. Making friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the, the <laughs> For me, the case in point. Um, but the last question here is like, what do you think of people who make be who make I don't know, like being ponyo their whole personality? It's like their personality just revolves around them using like parang or like making cuento. <laughs> I feel like there were a lot of that in CSR. Well, yeah, I think there were a few of those in CSR, like the Paarte girl. I honestly kind of found that annoying because I was struggling to speak Filipino so bad and these people were just like, you know, I can speak Filipino, but I'm going to make fun of like the Konya people. <laughs> like, you know, I didn't have to be this way. Like, what do you guys think about that? I think it's weird. I don't think being Konyo is something you should like be proud of necessarily. I think most people who like accept their konyo ness, they accept it in a way that's like, haha, yeah, I'm bad at Filipino. I wish I was better, but I know I'm not. So people who like actually just fully embrace that they can't speak Filipino and are Filipino, it's like weird to me because like what what part of not knowing your own language is a flex, right? You 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 yeah. get what I mean? So it's like weird. I, anybody who is like proud of being Konyo and like refuses to try and learn speak Filipino, it's like weird. Like I, I don't I don't get it personally. What about you, Sophia? Honestly, I don't. I I find I don't. 
I don't find it entertaining, honestly. I just find it as annoying. If I could compare, as annoying as Phil Ams, you know, making money <laughs> off so Phil- true. their parents, you know, speaking in a Filipino accent, and that just kiss me. That just pisses me. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, when I was yay big, when I was yay big, I thought it was funny. Yay big, so I don't know how young I was, but it's not funny anymore. It's not. It's really not. It's just the same thing with Konyo. Like you have to like understand that these people just can't. And if they don't make a conscious effort to like learn Filipino, then that's just on them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like then again, like each person has like their own reasons, like why they're Konyo, I guess. But like if they like are ashamed of speaking Filipino or learning it, then that's really on them. Honestly, like I don't think you should be. Ashamed of that, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's like a privilege. It's like I don't want to say privilege, but like it's it's an advantage there. It's an advantage that you have, you know. So yeah, I don't know. I find it so annoying. Like I see those people on TikTok. Right? Oh my god! <laughs> I, yeah. think, I like block yeah. them. <laughs> that group of people on TikTok. I'm like, why? Actually, I think I think that's a good way. If that's a good way to end this. This video. Or oh, do we say our goodbye? I mean, like, do we officially like? I think we can end it. I have like here. a closing. Yeah, you like, have. We're gonna end it and like do outro. that. Um, please like this video and comment down below, please. <laughs> Guys, I can do this. I don't think I can do YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to smash that notification bell. <laughs> <laughs> to get notified every time we post. <laughs> <laughs> Did it end with this thing? <laughs> Thank you.